Hello there. In this video, we're going to cover how DevOps engineers can set up a secure CICD pipeline using Bitbucket pipelines and empower developers to use it to ship code that's compliant with company policies. First, we're going to set up a CICD pipeline with sneak security scanning and SonarCube static analysis. We'll set this up as a shareable pipeline that developers can use across their repositories. Then we're going to see how developers can use the shared pipeline in their repositories to adhere to a company's engineering best practices with minimal code. Finally, we'll talk about how to update a shared pipeline so developers are always using the latest version to stay compliant. All right, let's take a look at how we set up a shared Bitbucket pipeline that has um, some cool security features in it. So I've got a repository called Shared Pipelines. I've already cloned this down to my workstation. And this repository just has a single Bitbucket pipeline.yaml file. So let's go take a look at the structure of that file now. This pipeline file is going to look really uh, familiar to anybody that's used Bitbucket pipelines before. We've basically got a set of definitions of steps, a sneak scanning step, a sonar cube scanning step, and some deployment steps. And then a little further down, we have two pipelines to find. We have a pipeline for our branches that runs our sneak scan and our sonar scan, as well as deploying to Dev and QA. And then we have another production deployment pipeline, which is going to deploy to some various production environments. Now, if we go back up a little bit and we take a look at this run sneak scan and run sonar scan step, we can see that these use some pipes. Bitbucket pipes are um, reusable steps that are kind of encapsulated and provided by uh, Atlassian. So there's a number of these that we can use. And basically, you can add any of these to the pipelines at any time. So let's go take a look at those pipes now. All right, we're going to jump over to our browser and we're going to search for Bitbucket pipes. We jump over to this second link here. We're going to come to the Bitbucket pipes page. We can scroll down and we can see a whole bunch of pipes are defined. If we take a look at security, for example, there are 15 uh, pipes that are ready to go. You can just use these. If you click on any of these, it'll give you a pop up that explains how to use the pipe, what data needs to go into the variables, and how to use them, as well as sample code snippet. We've also got um, code quality as an example. So if we go down to our sonar cube scan step, it'll tell you what this pipe does, how to use it, and what all the variables mean. Let's go back to our Bitbucket pipeline file in the terminal for a second. Another important thing to take a look at is this first line, export true. This means that we want to make this pipeline available for other users to consume. So in this way, engineering leadership or senior engineers can set up a pipeline um, with sneak scanning, sonar scanning, and other kinds of uh, code quality tools that can be shared and reused by other teams and other developers in their pipelines. And we can take this pipeline file here, which is about 56 lines, so it's very short. And when it's consumed by other teams, they'll only need a couple lines of YAML to get this pipeline to run in their repositories. So let's go take a look at that now. We jump back over to Bitbucket for a second. And we go to this other repository, Use Shared Pipelines. This is a simple JavaScript application that has a Bitbucket pipeline file in it. And this pipeline inherits from the shared pipeline that we looked at previously. So we're, I've also got this cloned down to my terminal. Let's go take a look at that pipeline. So in this case, we see that we have a very short Bitbucket pipeline. For our feature branches, we're going to import and run the shared pipelines mainline branches pipeline, which was defined earlier. And for our mainline branch, which is our production branch, we're going to run the shared pipelines mainline production branch. So the first piece here is the name of the repository where the shared pipeline lives. The second piece here is the branch upon which this pipeline is defined. And then finally, it's the name of the pipeline we want to take a look at. So if we go back to this other tab real quickly and take a look, 
we can see that we've got branches and production and we use branches and production. All right, now that we've taken a look at the structure of those two pipelines, the shared pipeline that defines our security steps and the pipeline that uses it, we're gonna do a quick example and show off how this works. So the first thing we do is we're gonna jump over to Jira. Now we're gonna grab our U shared pipeline Jira issue and move it to work in progress. We need to remember AT529 because we're gonna do the work in a feature branch so that our development panel gets populated by our changes. So let's jump back over to the terminal and start working. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is check out a new branch. And then from here, we're gonna make a change to the readme. It's a really trivial change, just for illustrative purposes. We're gonna do a git add, a git commit. Now we're gonna do a git push. All right, that looks like it's doing what it's supposed to. Now let's go back over to Bitbucket and take a look at the pipeline that's executing. Click on the pipelines button on the left hand nav bar. So we have a pipeline in progress. We can click in here and take a look at it. And as expected, we see the run sneak scan, run sonar scan, deploy dev and deploy QA steps from the shared pipeline. So again, just to illustrate this point, if we go back over to the shared pipelines repository that we're copying this pipeline from, and we click on Bitbucket pipelines, when we scroll down, we can see that for our branches, we're going to run these four steps. Now we're just gonna wait for this pipeline to complete. Now the pipeline is finished successfully, we can cut a pull request. So let's do that. To cut a pull request, we're gonna click on pull requests in the left hand nav bar. Then we're gonna click create pull request. We're going to choose our source branch, which is feature slash AT529. I'm going to click create pull request. Now from here, we can see we made a trivial change to the readme. We can approve and merge. One of the interesting things though, is that this pipeline that ran um, is pulled in here and we can take a look at it. So we can open this in a new tab. And we can see that the steps that were run. This is really useful for guaranteeing that this pipeline kind of met engineering best practices by automatically including the shared pipeline steps. We know that this pipeline ran a sneak scan. We know that this pipeline ran a sonar scan. Anyways, to merge this, we're going to click approve and then we're going to click merge. Now that that's done, we're going to click on pipelines in the left hand nav bar to take a look at the pipeline that kicked off. In this case, we get four different steps. These steps are the ones that are defined for the production brands in the shared pipeline. So again, if we click back over here, we can see that we're now running the steps that were defined in the production section. We're just going to wait for this pipeline to complete. Let's jump back over to the terminal and take a look at those pipeline fi or files again. So again, in the demonstration pipeline, we saw that we ran many, many steps, including sneak and sonar scans. And all of that was done simply by importing these shared pipelines. So it saves the developers a lot of headache having to build pipeline files themselves. They can reuse well-built pipelines and save a lot of time and kind of spend their time building features rather than mucking around with CI/CD pipelines. 
If we jump back over to the shared pipeline file, another benefit that engineering leadership sees here is that they can update this pipeline at any time by adding more steps. So right now we've got a sneak scan step and a sonar scan step. If we decide we want to add some other kind of code quality step or another security scan of some kind, they can modify the shared pipeline file and then all pipelines that import this will automatically start running that new step the next time they execute. So it's a really good way of keeping all of your pipelines up to date and it reduces technical debt because every developer development team doesn't have to go out and change their pipelines um, manually. Basically you can change it in one spot and have that change affect everybody immediately. All right. Thank you for watching this video about building secure CSCD pipelines using Bitbucket pipes and shared pipelines. You can find more videos like this in the Developer's Edge video series on the Atlassian YouTube channel.